give me a good example of well, where the, the platform is or was recently lacking and, and now standards are congealing around. Does it have to be recent? It doesn't well, have to be I recent. Mean, give there's me, there's, give there's all kinds. Example. I mean, <laughs> like from the, from the beginning, you know, it was like we, we used to have very textual sort of websites and that, you know, it was all about sort of just how you laid out the, the text. That's really all there was. There's was some imagery. Image tags were created just for the, basically the, just the text part image. of hypertext. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Flash and the whole plug browser plugins as something like that. That's right? true. We're still trying to catch up to that. I mean, right. what they what what and this is a point earlier too. Flash was a good example of some great things we could do on the web. The problem with Flash is that it's not available everywhere. The thing that HTML5 has is that it's literally available almost every yeah, device. Yeah, except Flash is installed on 98% of all computers. Yeah, I'm not sure but that Ubiquity was the problem iOS so much no. as the control no. issue. No. No. When did we see, from when did we see Flash go away though? It was when iPhone refused to implement it. That's when we saw Fair point. There, it was like everyone wanted to get away from it because it wasn't sort of the, the plat we didn't want to be on a plug-in. You know, well, and you didn't want the bloody platform. updates every time you booted your computer, updating Adobe, updating Flash, and then all the security issues inherent in that. But there was a window for that to be possible, right? Like, Apple could not have said, hey, we don't ship a web browser on our phone, right? Because the web has so much existing infrastructure, you can't just not have it. Right? But they so did it with Flash, and how many sites were built with Flash? I mean, certainly it was, it was lot, trickling sure. down, but, but they did it. But they did, right? They did, and but well, they're, they're, their advantage there's... there was that a lot of the things that would have been perceived losses, they made up for in a lot of the the rest of the ecosystem. The capabilities, sure. of native applications, more than made up for the lack. And oh, now we can't get video inside of Flash or something like that. And the phone itself is more than just a web browser, and so you're not going to not buy a phone simply because some of your Flash sites don't work. And many of the sites that weren't Flash looked crap on a phone anyway because they're like this, and people weren't really into that whole optimizing. They're, they're either going to go down this road of, of updating Flash to fit mobile, or they're going to go down the road that we did go down, which was updating you know the browser to support what we wanted, which was good. And the thing is about HTML5 is you said something about how it kind of moves faster. I don't know if I'm misinterpreting. Seems but, like it can evolve faster, at least from a totally biased perspective, but, totally in the web. I think that like... The community is very interesting because because we do like evolve in an interesting way faster, but the but we're we're also uh, held back by you know previous browsers, and it's becoming less and less of a problem now. Um, but I mean, we're still trying to catch up with programming paradigms, and you know, web components, for example, is a is something that probably should have been uh, in, implemented ten years ago. In fact. Uh, Microsoft actually came up with the idea in 1998 with the, the, uh, their HTML components spec and the .htc. It was a horrible, horrible implementation of it, which is classic Microsoft. <laughs> but they but, thought of it. <laughs> but they thought of it, which that's what they do. They, they think of things like really XHR, well. It's like right? Yeah. And, but the problem is, is that standards, and this is the sort of paradox with standards, is that it slowed us down. And now we're... we're you know, we're still trying to like very slowly catch up to, to our ideas. Like we have big ideas, but we can't catch up because it just takes so long with standards. Standards is great, but it's also stifling. And, uh, but what are, what are standards stifling? I mean, Chrome and Firefox are going to go off and do and implement whatever they feel they're will help their browser. Like the, the large swath of developers that want a stable platform, right? It's like we can evolve fast, but you have like a certain segment of developers on the bleeding edge, right? Yep. But then you have a whole bunch of other developers that just want to make things that work, and they want it to work across browsers without having to worry about it. But as long as there's no non-breaking change, as long as there's no breaking changes, yeah, evolution is always be backwards compatible. Well, uh, yeah. Which, with the the thing with Flash is a good comparison where you had to just get rid of it in order to move forward, and that's kind of like we have to. I don't know if we'll ever get this point. We're working towards it because browsers are updating much, much faster. And Internet Explorer is somewhat getting their act together, but Ignore they're still them. in the whole debate. <laughs> <It's still laughs> yeah. If you take them they're out, I mean, for the most part, we're moving quite fast these days. But we're still moving not, you know, at, not at optimal speed, but we're still uh, we're moving faster. I mean, yeah. now that we don't have browsers sticking around for 10 years like IE6, we're actually moving faster. But IE is still, you know, hasn't implemented uh, web components. But is there a systemic problem with the platform, like a gaping hole, or is it just this lack of agility perceived compared to Androids and iOSs and others? When you um, say platform, do you, what do you mean by that? Do you mean 
the libraries, the ecosystem, the compilers, the language. The I guess I meant, meant from the perspective of standards that we've been talking about because I see counterexamples day in and day out. WebRTC and Service Worker and all of these great technologies, even web components is actually a really great story of the ne weaving the next generation of what you know our web applications are going to look like. And so it's interesting to see that that something that, because it didn't happen fast enough, it would now be seen as a as an Achilles heel to the platform rather than well, a great banner of what it's doing in terms of no, I mean, evolution. It, it, it's a great banner, but it is always a little bit late, I feel like. Like CSS3 was late. I mean, we were for years trying to do rounded corners in the worst ways, you know, for five, six, seven years. And then finally we were sort of able to do it. And now we're almost 100% able to do it with well, if unless you're supporting i6 and 7 and 8 now, but we agreed are, we would. <laughs> woe to you. <laughs> Bless your soul. It's so, it's so sad that that was like 2010, where we're like rounded corners. Yeah. I love it. Right, and that's that's I like when that came out. It was it was really exciting, but it was like, why wasn't this here 10 it, years? It, yeah, and it felt then, so late. And then it's like you know gradients and everything, and now all the designers want flat, so it doesn't matter anymore. We're not using gradients. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> That's a good point, actually. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it, we're getting there. I mean, we're we're catching up. But but when you look at languages uh, that aren't necessarily like as held back by uh, um, the thing is, you have when you have several separate bodies trying to work together. There's just no way it's going to be as put together as one single yeah. entity saying, here's the next version of whatever, Xcode. I mean, you know, it's one thing to discuss our theory about the spec bodies, but unless any of us are sitting on them, it's maybe throwing, you know, stones at a glass house or whatever. I'm not but saying from an bad. implementer perspective, is, is the lack of speed, as Dave says, really holding you back? Um, it depends on what it is. I mean, in some cases, yes. I mean, it took a, for example, it took a long time for me, you know, start using Flexbox. People are talking about Flexbox. I know it's it's part of CSS. It's not, but people say, oh, CSS, it's HTML5. In my opinion, it's not, but let's go with it for the moment and let lots of people take, say it is. Um, and I wouldn't use it for a long time because, yeah, some browsers had, had, um, where you had implemented, others hadn't. And it's going to, like, yeah, every project we have to do has a certain browser that has to support. And if even one of them, it doesn't support it, it's like, well, we can't use it because Let's just do, use a method that works across all of them rather than use this new fancy one because this one doesn't get it. And but then we'd have to spend extra time writing something else for this particular one. And that can sometimes be a bit of an issue. And it can be the same with stuff like with um, HTML5 specific stuff. If something doesn't support it, you, and you have to support certain browsers. It's in the con contract with a customer. We're supporting Internet Explorer 8 or whatever. And then you have to do it. And you can take the decision, okay, like whatever it happens to be, um, Internet Explorer 8 doesn't support it, so we don't care. They get a basic version. But again, customer requirements. If they want the IE8 version to work exactly the same, and they're paying for it, then you have to do it. But and part of the decision can be, OK, well, we won't use this particular bit because this doesn't support it. How, how does that differ from targeting different versions of an operating system? For instance, in the Windows world, mm -hmm. you might have a client who says, I need a Windows, Windows application, Windows application. Oh, but it's got to support XP, and XP doesn't have a whole bunch, or it's got to support Windows 7 and Windows 8 and XP. And then there's bits you just simply can't do. I mean, how is that different in JavaScript HTML5? It's exactly the yeah. same scenario there. No, I, I agree. But it, sometimes it Wait, is. Yeah, so you're saying an application has to run on, yeah, you're right. Right. And you're so right. You, you've, you've got a discovery thing that you've got to do when you program. You've got to say, can I actually do this? And then the application will adapt itself. And that's it's no true that the web is kind of relatively young to the idea of feature testing, where every other software yeah, doesn't exactly. has been doing it for forever. Yeah. yeah. So in that, yeah. that regards, it's no different than native application yeah. development. I think it's a visibility, right? The fact is that some people can use these features earlier than others. It's not like, you know, again, like Xcode or something where you just get a new version and then everyone has it, right? It's more of a situation where you see the spec and the technology evolving before your eyes, and it's just a different world, right? You live in a world where you can see things coming down the pipeline. That's a good thing. You can see but whatever you, these new technologies you, are coming down. You can see that with other languages as well. I mean, Microsoft, for instance, releases its roadmap of what's going with C Sharp quite That's in true. advance, and, and other languages, Ruby, the same thing. 
to me, this doesn't feel like a technology problem so much as a cultural problem because we've known for years that we should be doing that buzzword progressive enhancement, that idea that we should be layering our applications with the newest things that are coming rather than feeling like we have to polyfill that old stuff into 15-year-old browsers. And yet, we've allowed key players, decision makers outside of our industry to force it into, it has to be the same or you can't use it. I remember being told, you can't use rounded corners because you can't do them in all browsers that we support. Well, that's ridiculous, right? Because isn't rounded corners a perfect example of that flourish that is supposed to progressively enhance? And I think the mobile thing has made that easier for other people to digest, right? This whole new form factor has allowed big companies to realize that, hey, the experience of my newspaper online on the phone doesn't have to be the same as it is on the desktop. Exactly, yeah. Like, was, but in yeah, fact, when I was a web developer, that. that was very much the case. It was like, this must look to the pixel the same in yeah. IE6. And you still have customers 7, who, who demand that. And I was just as, as you said, they didn't get that. If you kind of said, well, you know, this doesn't support this, so we'll do progressive enhancement. You have to sell that to them because they just go, well, why not? You just do it. But now, as you said, they understand that if they they now understand responsive design, so they get that their devices, their, their tablet, their mobile looks different to the desktop. You, you so you can say that to them now, and they now get it in a, in a way they understand a bit more. You're setting client expectations. We'll make a really good here, but it'll be amazing over here. Instead of it's yeah. really good here, but that's it won't be as good I, here. It's not part of my job. I don't intend to do that thing, but it can be quite difficult to 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 do that. And that is always, an, in some cases, it's an important thing, and you're you're stuck with it. You can Some people don't have that problem they can just do whatever they want and lucky to them but in the real world you you have to deal with these things so wait, sometimes it can hold you back so if standards i mean standards are getting kind of a bad rap here and so <laughs> if standards, standards are great standards. we all love standards if standards are trailing <laughs> you, Matt. developer demand <laughs> right i think we would all agree that in in at least some respects standards trail developer demand and sometimes way far behind right yeah. but aren't there certain places where the sort of um, institutionalization of standards has helped, like for instance, security. Let's talk about security because that's a huge concern and, and don't standards help us at least deal with some of that stuff by, by thinking about the real world implications before something gets set in stone? I have an example actually of when standards bit us in the ass. Um, so we had a client who wanted a game to work across select mobile devices, right? And including desktop browsers. And uh, we, were, we wrote some, wrote some code. It was uh, web audio API stuff. And the spec wanted it to fail. It wanted it to throw an error if something wasn't available. Most browsers just ignored it because that felt like more of a, I don't know why actually, that's just the way that developers did it. But it was across the board, every other browser, except for the one who followed the spec, that was the problem. And that's why we couldn't get paid before we fixed this. We had to go back and figure it out. We saw it was throwing the error as the spec said it should. So it's what, it was what was expected, but it was unexpected in this context because no one else was doing it. So the spec ended up being kind of a pain. But is not is that really a, a knock against the spec? I mean, oftentimes the spec gets knocked for the exact opposite when they pave the cow paths and then for 10 or 15 years we're all groaning and complaining, oh, why do they support that syntax? Why didn't they take the pure academic approach? I prefer so having can a we, spec. Can we complain on both sides? We can. We absolutely can. be fair can. about it? Oh, we're developers. We'll complain every which way. <laughs> <laughs> but I well, think what probably happened <laughs> is... <laughs> Everyone's developing it, and probably the, the most sensical way, just as a, as a developer, for whatever reason, just to make it work this way made sense. But then the other developers, I think it was Firefox, but I might be wrong, they don't got name to that names. point. Yeah, don't name names. <laughs> I think Plausible it was deniability. no one. <laughs> 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 they, they got to that point, and then they checked the spec, you know? And if it wasn't for the spec, they might have just done it the way everybody else does. The way everyone else was doing it. It's probably know, an accident. Learn by example. What the hush? <laughs> <laughs> Interpretations of the spec can also be slightly incorrect. As um, I, I noticed with the HTML5 uh, video element with post poster attribute, everyone else did it correctly except IE bizarrely. It's now fixed, but um, it was supposed to always show. Whenever you set a poster image, it was just always show this. Are you talking and about the video element? The video yeah. element, yeah. Mm -hmm. And But IE decided, no, if I have some video available, I will show the first frame. And to hell with your poster image. This is the poster <laughs> image. And it's a better they poster eventually image. fixed it in IE 10, and now it's doing what every other browser did. Um, and you know, that's an issue too, because it, the spec said what to do, and they just decided, yeah, now we'll do something different. Is it an issue with the spec, or is it an issue that the specs are just not tight enough? 
which is the same issue, I guess. Actually, but I think it might be an issue where the spec sometimes over constrained because there's an awful lot of places where the spec left open to interpretation on which, purpose. For example, HTML5 form elements, we saw a lot of exploration of the calendar approach, the date picker approach. Opera and other browsers experimented with it. Now, there were some notable, terrible things yes. that happened, like Safari Mobile got it pretty bad, right? But, but there's a lot of experimentation because the spec didn't over constrain too early. But I guess that's the point I was trying to make earlier. Like, the specs aren't bad, but it's just, it's almost a different development paradigm because you have independent people trying to write implementations of a spec. There's always going to be subtle differences because the spec changes, it changes quickly, and there are many key players all writing to the spec with different incentives. It's like Apple and Google trying to get along over how to build a phone. Right. <laughs> so, like, the, it's the not spec, necessarily a bad the spec thing, but... changes quickly while it's evolving. And definitely, if you're talking about the nightly versions of Firefox and Chrome, and, and even thankfully now we have a nightly version of IE, I mean, that deserves Oof. a cheers even it in, unto <laughs> itself. But the nightly versions are definitely going to change, but that's sort of like on the label. When you I know that the nightly is going to change every single night. But actually, the standards themselves are do, do congeal to a rather stable standard well, but once you get to those stable rather races of the stable browsers. is the key word there you know? and also what you mean by standard there's because always I mean, going to be there's two on HTML5 there's two specs what? did we just see recently W3C. W3C is now blacklisting the specs yeah that I don't know the full story behind that but it seems to be someone misinterpreting something okay. but I yeah, I didn't read past the headlines, so... Yeah, well, I, I'm on the list, and I kind of get a bit fed up with reading some of the, what, what some people <laughs> say. But I just mean in the sense, like, for example, you take the main elements. The um, W3C spec says you can only use once on a page. With the hot WG says, oh, you can use as many times as you want, it's fine. It's like header or footer. And it's kind of like, what? well, okay, it's kind of the same, but it's not... And it's, if some, some people will code using one spec and not the other, for example. And that can cause confusion as well. Because someone does it and someone goes, oh, no, that's wrong. I look at this spec. But this spec says this. Okay. Which one is the standard? Well, we've painted an awfully bleak <laughs> picture. <laughs> let's move away this, from standards. I, I, yeah, let's move standards away from standards and let's talk about the viral Normally. you know, evolution of things. So where is HTML5 headed beyond the browser?